Welcome to The Advocate, your Sunday reminder that important conversations are among the necessary tools for a sane society. I will be talking about the effect to cause facilitating sustainable problem solving for national development. Abdul Malik is talking about the civilization of internet. Shola Akinjola will be talking about maintaining professional integrity. Juliet Okene will be talking about the breadwinning woman. Why Raymond Nkanibi, a lawyer and public affairs commentator, will be talking about JAPA, the human capital flight phenomenon in Nigeria, and the growing emergency. Today, expect a mix of seriousness, laughter, and jabs. We'll be right back after the break. From effect to cause, facilitating sustainable problem solving for national development. In the process of governance and resource management in any nation, problems or challenges are made to surface at some point. The ability of those at the helm of affairs to effectively address these problems or challenges when they occur goes a long way in enhancing the functionality of that nation. In order for problems or challenges to be solved effectively, we have to look beyond its effects and try to understand the cause rather than just mere reacting to its effects or effects. A very casual example is smokes causes discomfort, which is a problem. The most logical thing to do is to locate the fire and put it out, rather than mere reacting to the smoke. The rule is always ask why. As, is, as simple as this is, it is applicable to the following almost perpetual problems that has somewhat influenced some negative perception of the nation, and these are ASU strike. Over the past 21 years, Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, spent over 1,500 days on strike. That's over four years. In response, most government officials see the strike as a sort of discomfort and then seek to subdue ASU, either by threats to arrest or sack or even suspend payment of salaries, rather addressing the root cause which are providing adequate learning and infrastructure, funding academic research or projects, lecturers and student welfare, among others. Education is not cheap, but ignorance and inadequate education is more expensive. Max exodus of health workers. In recent years, there have been an increment in the number of essential health care workers, especially medical doctors and nurses, exiting in search for greener pastures. The government has not provided an appropriate response nor addressed the issues spanning from poor health care facilities and infrastructure to health workers' welfare packages. This has been a major source of burnout for both doctors and nurses. As there are few personnel on, on ground to manage so many patients in the poorest of condition. Jakpa syndrome. Jakpa is a local parlance used mostly among young Nigerians to explain the migration of Nigerian graduates or other young professionals from Nigeria to countries with bigger economies and better opportunities. This is as a result of high unemployment, poor government policies on youths, and very low access to few opportunities. All these problems are just a few among many others, including insecurity. But in order to solve these problems, the government needs to engage all stakeholders in identifying the root cause. Rather than just merely reacting to their effects and living in denial, Lastly, let's think about this. In crisis management, be quick with the facts and slow with the blame. That's from Leonard Sefa, a US public relations executive, meaning deal with the cause and the effect will take care of itself. Thank you for uh, Elijah for this uh, really, really deep, I mean deep drilling into the problems we have in this country. I, I think you're talking more like we should look, we should reflect on the causes of the problems we have versus just being reactive and trying to solve, to quench fires, if you like. But I don't think some of our leaders, or most of our leaders, actually want to think. I think, I think they want to lead, make money, hand over to proxies or people who will take over from them and continue the cycle. Reflection, proactivity to problems 
is only for people who actually want to solve this problem. I personally think that most of our leaders do not care. Mm -hmm. Exactly, because that, that's what's causing the Japa, Japa um, issue you mentioned. A lot of youths are well-skilled, highly skilled. You see a, 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 a young person who is, who is 25, and highly skilled in a particular area, and is working in an organization and feels uh, feels that he's not well paid, you know. And the, and the unfortunate thing is that a lot of young people go the extra mile to, you know, you know, um, improve themselves. You know, like you invest in personal development, and we know that's not cheap. So you know, what you expect is something better, something you know something fin more financial rewarding. And unfortunately, um, I saw a post on LinkedIn of a particular guy who said he has been, he has been into uh, software, he's a software developer here in Nigeria, and he's been doing so well, so well here, and suddenly um, the Gem German government you know, just came to, to pick him up. As in within one week, he said he wasn't even, um, he, he was so excited about the offer. And you know, before you know it, it's like you're poaching, you're poaching your young talents and you know, exporting what we are supposed to benefit from. And the same thing is happening with ASU strike. With everything. With ASU strike. Like young people sitting down at home for over six months and nobody is saying anything. It's quite unfortunate. So, Abdul, just before you jump in, Jackpa for context means migration, Max Exodus. So, ah, he knows oh, now. Please. Have you not heard him? <laughs> Abba. <laughs> As soon as I landed at the airport, they think I'm a house boy. So <laughs> how would I know that? I think um, the issue Nigeria is facing is a common problem in Africa. Um, one of the things I will say, since um, 1900, they have been telling us that we're the leaders of tomorrow. I feel like we're at that stage where we want to be leaders. And then people who promised us that, who told us that while we were kids, while we were in primary school, they're still leaders. So you look at them like, I'm supposed to take up this position now. And then, but this position is still held by someone who promised it to me. So, and um, with other foreign countries purchasing talent from Africa, it, it's common now. And then look at the economy, and then look at Africa economy, and then we don't lack opportunities in Africa. Or we know we lack skills. We just have people who don't want to give us a share. People who don't care. Eating. People who don't care. And I, so, and that's what I think. Uh, I, I think in that in that phenomenon, if I'm in Nigeria. 10,000 um, Naira is like 400 rands in South Africa. And then if a South African company offered me um, 30,000 rands a month and I convert it to, uh, to Naira, it's a lot of money. So tell me, why would I not jack back? <laughs> <laughs> I love the way you said that. <laughs> yes, <it's> been <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I think that's the issue. So, uh, it's a common problem. It's happening in the entire West Africa. I'm from Sierra Leone, but I've been in South Africa for so many years now. And then um, certain things is why people, not that we want to be at home, there's no place like home. I've been, I feel at home ever since I stepped in Nigeria the last couple of days. It's a near good city ever. I want to go to Sierra Leone after several even everything. But, yeah. but being at home, will they give me the resources that will enable me to perform my exactly. best? 100%. That's a big question. Raymond. Raymond, are you there? Yeah, yeah it's good I, to hear yeah, Raymond's here. perspective. Ooh, it, it's, it's quite interesting, Mr. Felix, that um, we appear to have working uh, from the same side of our bed today because. Apparently, you had also weighed in on a subject that I'll be speaking to um, shortly. So, um, like you've probably pointed out, um, we've just been dancing around the problems for, for a number of years. So, and the, the theme of your script reminds me of this Igbo proverb that says that a man who does not know where the rain began to beat him would not know where he dried his body. So it speaks to that uh, problem of um, effect and cause. So um, it's, it's, it's a shame that um, after over uh, 60 years of, of independence, um, Nigeria has not been able to um, uh, locate or identify where the proverbial rain began to, to, to beat it. And of course, the consequences has, has, been, has been there. And very more unfortunately, our generation appear to be at the, at the receiving end of it. So I agree with you. Um, uh, it ultimately boils down to a question of leadership. And um, hopefully, the next election will provide an opportunity for Nigerians to, um, uh, to elect the kind of leaders who will begin to uh, put the country along the path where we'll be focusing on, uh, on the solution instead of repeating uh, uh, failed diagnosis. Thank you. Thank you very much, Raymond. 
all right, let's try our best to put out the fire. We shouldn't be bothered about the smoke. So let's always deal with causes and leave the effect alone. Abdul Malik will be right back after the break. <laughs> 